I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining with us for another interesting interview. And this one has the earmarks of some really interesting stuff. And so, Emerald Haith, I appreciate you coming all the way from Raleigh, North Carolina. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for... You're a North Carolina girl your whole life. Entire life. Wow. Loved it. My entire life. And now, is this a North Carolina accent oh, yes. we're going to hear? <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. Well, it's sure nice. I really appreciate you coming so far to share, and and uh, you, you do have an interesting story. So tell us, you were born and then in North Carolina, and yes, your parents, were they members of the church? Yes, um, I was born in Raleigh. My parents were both members. My mom... I like to tell people that um, they say, well, is your family from Utah? When they hear I was born, I'm, no, no, my mom answered the door. The missionaries came knocking on the door one day and oh, really? she answered. And so she was a convert. She was. She was a convert. Mm -hmm. She was had been married for a couple of years. It was in the late 1950s. Um, oh, okay. At mm -hmm. the time, my father did not join. He waited a couple of years. And I like to say he uh, he was a good Southern gentleman. He believed you go to church on Sunday, whether it's a Baptist church <laughs> or a Methodist church. You went to church on Sunday. So... He, he did join the church, and then they were actually married for 18 years before I was born. So my parents were older when I was born, oh. and uh, I was an only child. Okay. Did they ever go through the temple? Or? No. My father went as far as um, being a teacher in hmm. the priesthood. Okay. Um, and so, no, they never did. Now, I did when I got, um, you know, when I was a teenager, I went to the temple and did baptisms, but, but we you? never went as a family. Oh, okay. And you were active as a young woman? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Young lady, primary, I guess, yes. and young women's. And yes. Your presidency in the young women's mm -hmm. and uh, seminary. Seminary went to all four years of seminary. Yeah. Um, you know the dances we used to have on the um, Saturdays um, after we'd have a oh, yeah, you know, outings. Yes, all those. I was pretty much just a. Now, church how many board. LDS people were in the area? Um, actually, quite a few. Um, in the seventies, we had um, a lot of people move there for IBM. Um, computers. Oh. So we had a big IBM um, group of people that lived there. In that. So yes, we had a lot of people from Salt Lake actually and from um, Utah and from you know all over the West. So it was a very, um, for being in the South, we had a very diverse um, congregation. Okay. And so you got to go to young women's camps mm -hmm. and all that kind yes. of stuff. Do you feel like you had a testimony of the church? I think so. Um, you know, I used to remember sitting in fast and testimony meeting and um, listening to the people talk and they'd get up and they'd start crying and Say how the church was true, and Bishop, or um, uh, Joseph Smith was the true pop prophet, yeah, and uh, yeah. Brigham Young, and everything, and just hearing that kind of reinforces yeah, your yeah. testimony. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I think at that age, I thought I believed, but sure. looking back, I don't know if I really had that firm a belief or not. Yeah. And, and around youth campfires and youth groups and that kind of stuff, you get a chance to bear testimony. Yes, yes, Did I was, you do that? Yes, I was yeah. always kind of shy, so I didn't like getting yeah. up in front of a lot of people. But yeah. when I was, you know, in a smaller group and everyone was, um, you know, getting sure. up and sharing their testimony, I would do do that yeah. too. So yes, I did. You know, you just you just have that feeling. I mean, it is a feeling that the church is true, and your family's Mormon, and your friends are at least the, the your Mormon friends at church, and are, are, you know, mm -hmm. just really no question about about the church yeah. being true. Did any questions ever come up? And, um, 
to you? Not a whole in lot. High school, um, or? Not a whole lot. Well, when I when I turned sixteen, I started driving and working and really because I you know I, I was very sheltered when I was growing up. So when yeah. I started kind of stepping out and being around a lot of other people and everything, I started kind of questioning a little bit, but nothing yeah. significant. I still you know as I'd say, follow the rules, did what I was supposed to do, um, you know, went to church every Sunday. You did say you had an interesting experience when you were in elementary, when you were... Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I was probably in the maybe first, second grade. I was young. Oh, really young? Huh? Yeah. And um, a kid came up to me and somehow they were saying, what church do you go to? And I said, I was Mormon. And they said, oh, you're not a Christian. And I said, I didn't really know what to say. <laughs> they said, you're in a cult. And I said, and I really didn't know what to say. So I came home. I was really upset. And I told my mother that. And she said, no, we are a Christian church. We believe in Jesus Christ, and, and it's a Christian church, and you're not Nicole. And I mean, she was she was pretty upset, but I it it you know it was something that really bothered me when well, I was. You when remember I, it? Yeah. Oh, sure. I remember. I remember the kid really well. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Yeah. Okay. So after high school, then you you after start having school. some personal. Yes. After high school. school, when I um, when I turned 18, yeah. um, right about the time I left for college, actually a couple of days. Um, after I left for college, I turned 18. I went to um, UNC Wilmington, which is in Wilmington, North Carolina, about two hours from Raleigh. Okay. Um, a lot of, well, I think there were like three other people that graduated with me, and they all were going to um, BYU, and my parents didn't have the money for me to go. Okay. So I felt like I kind of got shunned a little bit because I went to a state school and did not, you go know. Go to BYU. Yeah, and, you know, they were talking about it the whole senior year, and I knew I wasn't going to be able to go. So um, I went to Wilmington. And as I drove off, I remember thinking, I'm done with this. I'm not going to do what I'm, you know, I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm done with church. Now, why, why would you have that? I, and I do think there's a lot of young people, and I know that from my personal experience being in Bishop Briggs and, and as a bishop, but young people get to age 18, leave high school, and start looking for other options is did you feel burdened by the church and its rules and yes that kind of very thing? much so and I just wanted to do my own thing I was I was ready to you know break out kind and of rebel a little yeah because yeah. I had been a very very good good kid growing up I mean never gave my parents any any yeah. problems never very rarely got into trouble when I did it was very insignificant so were they surprised when you had or were um, you surprised at yourself no no no, no I really wasn't I was you just ready to <laughs> just completely did a um, 180 and went the opposite direction I hid a lot of it from my mother, um, yeah. kind of strained our relationship because I didn't come home a whole lot. I would, you know, I'd come home for holidays. Because you'd feel obligated to go to church. I yeah, guess, a lot so. of that. I would always, when I'd come home on the weekends, I would always say, oh, I've got to be back. Um, I've got a test to study for. I've got to be back for some. I always came up with a so reason, so left, I'd leave early. left early on mm -hmm. Sunday so you didn't have to go to church. Mm -hmm. and did you take institute there? At, mm -mm, no. Did they offer it? At, um, I don't even know because I never, never even, even checked. Huh? Didn't even, I was done. I, I turned around and said, I'm done with this. Oh, so that's interesting. And I really didn't want to have anything to do with any church. It wasn't just the LDS church. It wasn't like you ever felt guilt and that you needed to, if you were ever going to come back to church it would have been the Mormon church? No, no, no. not really. really. Um, maybe a little guilt but yeah. I, you know, kind of brushed it off and kept going and just doing my own thing. Okay, and so what, how, how long does this have to go on? Oh, about 20 years. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> about 20 years. Um, I and you went say through all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, New Age, a uh, little dabbling in um, Eastern religion, a little dabbling in Wicca. What um, did you find there? Did you find peace? Or? No, not really. Um, I would say that I never went through a phase where I thought I was atheist. Um, I always saw there was something bigger like than me. Bigger, okay. But as far as Jesus goes, I'd never, because I didn't have a relationship with him at the time, I think I never really understood from growing up Mormon who Jesus was. His, I mean, I knew he was the son of God and yeah. all that, but not any kind of relationship. What, um, what, is that a flaw in Mormonism? Ah, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I think guess so. I would say it is. It, in fact, we covered that last with our last guest, kind of in the idea that we as Mormons kind of develop this relationship with the church. When you're eight years old, mm -hmm. you're going to be baptized and become a member of the church, mm -hmm. and a convert always becomes a member of the church. Um, you it know, was always you're not that, to remember. Jesus. You're not coming yeah. to Jesus no. or anything. So when you find out the church is or you can't live the commandments, or you just don't want, or you leave that. You don't have a relationship. No. Oh, interesting. And um, I'm even like I remember, you know, people bearing their testimony. It was always, 
you know, I believe the church is true. I believe that Joseph Smith was a prophet. I, and at that time, yeah, it was Spencer Book W. Kimball's Kimball true, was a prophet. Yeah, the Book of Mormon's true. But occasionally Jesus would come up. But I don't really remember Jesus a whole lot no. growing up. Yeah. It's just, I know he was in the sacrament every every week, but other than that and ending the prayer, mm -hmm. that was about, about yeah. it. So you didn't really feel like you had that relationship mm -hmm. either, but you felt like there was a higher power. Mm -hmm. and, I always okay. believed there was something bigger than me. I don't, I don't know what that was, yeah. but I, never, I don't think I ever went through a period where I didn't believe in something bigger than I was. Okay, well, did you get married during this time then? And I did. I, was mar I married uh, when I was 21. I was married for nine years. Um, got divorced oh. um, and then I was single for a number of years mm. and that kind of had had some actually was getting out of a fairly bad relationship mm. and um, I was in a very dark time in my life um, when, very when was this uh, was 2005 this? Oh, okay and just you know suffering with a lot of anxiety some depression Having a lot, of, I had a good job, but was having some issues with some um, coworkers. Um, just a lot of stuff going on, and <laughs> I remember um, that November, December, thinking, "I need to go back to church. That's that's what I need to do. I need to go to church." You were really in a dark place. Yeah, I was in a dark <laughs> place. Sure. And then I, the first question is, "Well, what church do I go to?" Because I knew I was not going to go back to the Mormon you church. You weren't going. Okay. That wasn't even a, a question. Okay. So, a coworker of mine that w was not your traditional, you know, conservative Christian type person, but very much had her, she was very open with her beliefs at work without, oh. without saying it in a way that, you yeah. know, put her. But you knew where she knew, stood. Knew where she yeah. stood. She, yeah. she loved Jesus. And um, I was like, hmm, she seems pretty okay. Maybe, maybe <laughs> I'll check her okay. church out. I'll check her church out. Because I always, the other thing that I always felt was very judged. I always felt very, very judged. Everything that my I, family or friends um, or not just, so much family, but the oh. other church members. Um, oh. You know, it was always I, I just felt like we were, everybody was watching each other and just judging you. And and because my parents hadn't gone to the temple and I hadn't gone to the temple okay. um, growing up, I felt judged you for felt that. Judged. Just just you know, my father was a teacher, so he wasn't part of you know um, you know a lot of the church the priesthood leadership. Yes, and exactly. That kind so of stuff. I just always felt maybe it was going on, maybe it wasn't, but I felt that way. So Well I think even I think people perceive that or at least that's the feeling and the church must must uh, support that feeling somehow or it wouldn't be there. So mm -hmm. but anyway, so you decide to go to so a church. So I decided to go to church. So <laughs> they didn't have services the first um, Sunday after Christmas because they uh, they they didn't have services because they took their um let their church um staff have off a Christmas vacation so oh, they, okay. so it was like I, I should have looked at the calendar but I think it was like maybe the fourth or fifth of January okay. and they had a service and I was like okay I'll go I'll go to that and she told me she says casual you know you can wear jeans you you know just come did that seem strange no it sounded great. <laughs> But strange to <laughs> strange, strange, strange to your to, Mormon. Strange to my upbringing. But remember, there's been you know 20 plus years laps here. So my goodness. So uh, I said, okay, yeah, okay. So I, I, you know, got on my jeans and you know, walked in. And they didn't even have a church building at the time. Um, the church, it's um, the name of it was Port City Community Church. It was in Wilmington. Okay. And um, they met in a middle school. And so I remember walking in, and I was just kind of like, I was kind of nervous. Actually, I was real nervous. <laughs> And I was like, oh, is somebody going to, you know, say something to me? And I'm looking around, and everybody's like walking around and laughing and talking. And um, they had a coffee station set up, and I see people walk around drinking That's coffee. Strange. And I was like, wow, this is really different than what I was used to. <laughs> so it was really, really crowded. And I remember them really? trying to, oh, yeah, it was, they, they awesome. were a very large, church, a very large um, group that went there. Yeah. And I remember them trying to get people to scoot in so there could be enough seating. And they're like, is anybody by themselves? And I was, I was like, I am like, well, come over here. We have a seat for you. So I went in and I was still really nervous. And then all of a sudden it got really quiet and the band came on stage. And it was, we had a, you know, it was a band <laughs> with contemporary Christian music. And I didn't even know any of the songs at the time. They had the words up on the screen. Right. And everybody was standing up and I was just like, wow. What the, you really thought that was? I thought this was great because yeah. I wanted something totally different than what I had grown up with. Yeah. And, and it, that is. And then I was like, okay, this, this is okay so far, okay so far, and then... Um, what did you think of the words that you were seeing on the screen? Did you relate to those at all? I or? just, I, not really, because remember, this is, I hadn't been to church in a long time, so, no. you know, I remember looking at the words and thinking, this is kind of neat, because... You know, I remember sitting in sacrament meeting and people kind of sitting laid back and they're, you know, and there's always a bunch of babies crying and, you know, nobody really got into, I mean, you were singing, but it was, but I mean, it was like, yeah. you could just feel 
just feel the energy in that mm -hmm. room with, um, and I, you know, I didn't know the words of the song, but I, you know, kind of, I like to sing, so I was trying to, you know, keep, keep up with it. And then they started the message, and it was about forgiveness. And I was having a really hard time with forgiveness. So it was just like, mm -hmm. it was being spoken to me. So I was like, <laughs> it was over. And I'm like, okay. So it should be continued because it was a you know, three-part series. So I was like, well, okay, I'll be back next week. Oh, good. And so then they I got came you back. back. They got me back, yes. Well, the one thing I noticed, uh, g getting back to the music, was how, how much the words were about Jesus. Yes. And about praising him and what he had done for us as opposed to, Praise to the Man or yes. some of these other songs yes. or Pioneer songs and stuff. Yes, or Joseph and, Smith or, yeah, Pioneers and, <laughs> and, and, and all that stuff. And then the message, I guess, was that, was did you understand grace at this point no. in, in terms of forgiveness? Or no. How did, what did you learn, I guess, during those um, first few lessons? Well, I learned, you know, about, you know, forgiving people and not being, you know, forgiving so you could be forgiven. It still didn't really click a whole lot. And then um, after a few weeks, they offered this class called Starting Point. Oh. And, um, is that a national or is that yes, just for yes, that church? Yes, um, it's a national. Called it's Starting a, Point. Yeah, you can go online and... Um, you know, if somebody wanted to offer it in their church, it's a great place for it's people. It's like a 14 week, 14 week class, mm -hmm. that what you were saying? And it's like in a small group setting, so you have about six or eight people in it. Um, you know, what's the focus of that? The Bible. It starts at oh the very boy. beginning. It's like, if you can imagine the Bible in a, in a 14 weeks, I think it's 12 weeks now. I think they actually changed the curriculum and now it's 12 weeks. But it's just basically starts with Adam and it goes all the way through um, Jesus and then Paul. and. Um, so you started taking that? Mm -hmm. When did you, you must have had some moment that kind of t turned your thinking. I mean, you've been in a dark place, you said, and what, was there something that happened that made you think, oh. I remember one what? Sunday sitting there, and it had been a, probably, gosh, maybe a few months after I'd been going to um, Port City. I remember sitting there, and um, I remember Mike talking about just letting things go and letting God be in charge that, you know, you don't have to be in charge anymore. You don't have to you know, try to control Great everything. Feeling, isn't it? Yes. And I remember thinking that's what I've been doing. I've been all my life I've been trying been to in charge. Trying to be in charge. Trying to keep all that ball, balls up in the air juggling it. And when I heard him say that, it just like clicked. And I'm like it was a sense of release, a sense of just, oh my gosh, I don't have to be in charge anymore. And you know, that that probably was a huge, huge turning point yeah. for me. Realizing that. And just and God gave you that little message. And now you had an experience when you were just really young. Yes, yes. Tell us about that just a little bit. So when I was, I probably was three or four years old. I was very young. Um, my mother had a very good friend that lived about an hour from us, and we'd go visit a couple of times a year. And she was went to a Baptist church, and she was very active in, in the church. And she, when we were there, she would invite us to go with her. So we were going to be there on a Sunday, so we went to church with her. And... Um, I remember sitting there, and, and you know, this is a very Southern Baptist <laughs> church, and the minister's very loud and, and everything. But at the end, he, he, he told people, you know, if you want to have Jesus in your heart, you can invite him in your heart. He'll be there forever. He'll be there for you. You know, he's your, your friend and all of that. And I thought, this sounds like a really good idea. I think I want Jesus in my heart. So You really thought that mm -hmm, as a young person. Mm -hmm. And so he, like, kind of did a little prayer. And then he invited people to go up front. And I remember saying, Daddy, can I go up front? And he's like, you're too young. You can't do that. You're, you're not old enough. So I just kind of sat back. And then, you know, that, that happened. And then I went back home, and we continued on with our normal routine. And I just kind of walked past that, and it never, never, you know, never developed that relationship. It was like I had him planted. Yeah. But I didn't have anybody there or, you know, didn't have the guidance I needed to develop that relationship. Did you keep thinking about that over your life or did that come? When did no, that, not till I was till going I, back to the yes, starting point and, or the church yes, and stuff. Yes. And then I started thinking about all the crazy stuff I had done all through those 20 years of wandering in the desert, I like to say, going down all kinds of different paths. You think Jesus just has a such a sense of humor? I mean, Probably so. But I think the whole Emerald, time you're going to be going through this and. You know, yeah. I'm going to wait for you. Yes. I know you said that yes. uh, to me earlier. Yes. That you knew that Jesus was waiting for you. That's so special. <laughs> well, did you did you remember that then? At what point did you remember that? Now, I remembered it because um, I remember one time talking to one of the um, pastors, and he said, asked me, if you know, when were you saved? And I started thinking about it, and I'm like, 
well, actually, when I was like three or four years old, I was. But then I, you know, because I accepted him then. And, and you know, I always hear people talk about, you know, once you accept him, you know, he's always there. Despite all the crazy stuff I did, he was still there waiting for me. So, yeah. you know, it was like when I finally took that step and decided to allow God to run my life and not try to do it myself. Yeah. That was kind of like a reaffirming that. Yeah. So have you kept going to this oh, port city? Church? I went there until 2009, and in 2009 my mom got ill, and oh. so I had to move back to Raleigh. Um, okay. I'd stayed in Wilmington all, all from the time Your I left. Your dad had passed away. Uh, yes, my dad had passed. passed away, and um, I moved back to Raleigh. And um, at the time when I um, moved back to Raleigh, my husband, who I'm married to now, Scott, we decided we'd go to a church. And by that time, Port City. Gosh, there's probably about 5,000 people going there. It had grown very, very quickly. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it was they very, had their very, own building by then? Yeah, they had they... gotten a building. Okay. They had three services, I think four now. But um, I was looking for another large church, and he kept saying, no, I really want to go to a smaller church. Scott did. Your Scott did. Husband. And so I was like, okay, we can we can check some out. So we went to about three <laughs> different ones. And the first one we went to was Oak City Church, which is where we go now. Yeah. And we went to a couple of different ones, and we came back there. And I'd say we probably have about 400 people that attend regularly. Oh, there's two services. So and I mean, I have some verse wonderful, by verse and just yes, yes, very you know, biblical, biblically based teachings. We yeah. have a great pastor. What did your mom think of this uh, transition um, of yours? She, I actually, <laughs> I walked in one day, and she now has passed away. Yes, yeah, right? she has she passed away in two thousand eleven. Mm -hmm. I walked in one day and I heard her talking to a friend on the phone. I heard her say something to the effect of, you know, Emma's going back to church now, and I'm really glad. I wish it was the Mormon church, but you know, <laughs> at least she's back at church again. So uh -huh. I think she accepted it. I think she, in her heart she really wanted me to start going, you know, going back to church uh -huh. with her. But How old was she when she converted to the Mormon church? Probably in her late 20s. Uh -huh. Do you yeah. think she had a sense of an ease with Jesus or a trust in Him? I think she may have before she may have been born again? because she grew up going to church as a child. Yeah. Um, so you have hope for her. I do, she... and that's something that does weigh heavy on me a lot when yeah. I think about it. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, she, so she had gone to church and then she converted when she was, I guess, about 27, 28, some, somewhere in that yeah. time frame. So has Jesus taken on a little different <laughs> oh, yeah. for you? Oh, yeah, definitely. Than being in the Church of Jesus Christ yes. of Latter-day Saints? Yes, I mean, it's just, I mean, I think back, like, actually, while we were, we've been here, we, um, yesterday we were, um, went to Temple Square and we walked through the Visitor Center yeah. and kind of, a lot of the lady missionaries, sister missionaries came and were talking to us and, yeah. We were looking at, um, there was a display of, it was of um, Jerusalem, and it had the different pictures of like Jesus, and my husband calls me over, he goes, look at this, he goes, it goes from Gethsemane to the um, resurrection, he goes, the cross isn't here. It was like they left the whole set, and it's like, but that's everything, it's Jesus yeah. Shedding his blood for our sins. Is that in First Corinthians that for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness? And it is. I had no respect or appreciation for the cross mm -mm. until I came out and realized that's what, you know, instead, we have his temple with a Moroni on mm -hmm. it. <laughs> isn't yes. That, isn't that strange? Yeah. Well, uh, okay, so you've, uh, let me just, <laughs> I guess you have a freedom now that you just didn't have before. Very much so. The Bible is taken on a yes. little different perspective. Yeah, I've read it. Um, I mean, I remember as a kid one time, my mother, I wanted a Bible. I wanted a Bible, so I carried my Bible around. I don't think I ever opened it up. I just carried it around with me to church oh, every yeah. Sunday. Mm -hmm. Got a little Maybe older. Maybe opened up in seminary or Maybe something. Occasionally. Maybe occasionally. Um, prepare a talk or something. Yeah, but, but yeah. just, you know, it was kind of dirty on the outside, but the pages weren't ruffled up or underlined <laughs> or anything. Um, but, yeah, you know, I, one year for Christmas, I got the chronological Bible in a year, and I read that from cover to cover. Oh, did you? That was great. Um, you know, I still... I thought about getting one of those. It's It shows the the Bible in chronological yes. order. Yes. It's, is it's, it a lot different? Yes. Yeah. Well, or significant yes. Or it makes a lot more sense because when you get to, when you're reading like in First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles, yeah. and each king had a, um, had oh, a prophet. That would, that would help. It, it lines it up. <laughs> and, you know, not just that, but it, it really, like when you're reading through the Gospels of Jesus, yeah. um, it has the, you know, it goes in chronological order. So you'll read Luke and then you'll read Matthew, and you know, they'll put them together, so the you're reading. That they've determined that they were written in mm -hmm. what order? The letters of Paul, I guess? Yes, or? he would take the letters and it'd, it'd match it up with Acts, so it'd be you know, going through where he was in Acts, and then they'd have the letter written to the, um, to the, you know, the church that he had um, planted. So it was, yeah. it was, it's really, I highly recommend reading it. Even yeah. if you don't do it in a year, just get a chronological, chronological Bible. Bible. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it's just amazing, and, and I, uh, I really appreciate you sharing your story. And you, is there anything you'd like to say to your family, friends, or do you have well, other family that were ever LDS? Not a lot. Most of my family is deceased. I have a couple of cousins. You were an only child. An only child. Um, and Some I know cousins, you're saying, that I have are a couple, LDS? Yeah, I have, no, no. Oh, no, no. no other LDS? No, no. I pretty okay. much. Um, I've been <laughs> adopted by my, um, by my in-laws. <laughs> so they're my family. Um, but no, I have um, actually a couple of groups of people that yeah. I kind of want to speak to. One are the um, ones that, a few friends that I still have that are Mormon. Um, back in North Carolina. Yes, huh? back in North Carolina. <laughs> it, when you, if, if you get this far, you may have turned me off by now, but if you get this far, ask questions. Be concerned with what you're believing. If somebody tells you everything that they tell you is true, just ask questions and don't, um, don't take it just because there's a lot of things that you don't know about. And, and the essays, the LDS, LDS.org, the essays, a lot of them don't, don't even know they're there. And a mm -hmm. few that do know they're there, they haven't read them. And I know that's a big, strong encouragement now not to go on the, online and look things up on the Internet. Right. And I'm just ask questions and, and really find the truth out. And then for the people that are ex-Mormons, and I know um, I have some friends that fit in that category, I just encourage them to put your unhappiness, your anger, your not distrust mm, in religion, because yeah. I was there. I was there before, um, and just give it a shot. Give Jesus a chance, because he really wants to wants to um, be there for you. And then for my friends that are non-believers, <laughs> I know there's some of the, those that are going to be watching this. Um, you know, During not, those 20 years, you probably picked up a few <laughs> of those quite friends. A few, <laughs> but I try really hard not to push my beliefs on you, And but I think you've heard what I believe in now, so um, just want you to know that I'm still going to be your friend regardless, but if you ever want to know more, I'll be more than happy to talk to you about it. Oh, good for you. Have, have some of any of your friends or old Mormon friends that you have at, at, at seminary or have you had a chance to ever share with them? Um, not really. Um, you know, during that time I was gone, a, a lot, lot of them, moved yeah, away I, st I have like some on Facebook friends, but, oh, okay. but not, not really many that I've um, kept up with. I have yeah. a couple that actually were Mormon that are no longer Mormon that we're real, I'm real close with, but but it is disappointing when Mormons find out and then they just give up on everything, right? They don't, they don't, they don't trust God now. They don't trust yeah. the Bible. No. They don't, tr and they don't have a relationship with Jesus. They've just thrown the church out and, mm -hmm. and everything else with it. That's disappointing. Was it the, throw out the baby with the bathwater. That, yeah, that, that kind of old phrase. Well, Emerald, I appreciate. It. What a pretty name. I guess is that a. My any, mother would like, that? she was kind of unusual, and she wanted to name me something different, so. Would have been interesting if you had brothers and sisters. Yes, yeah, so I can only imagine what they would have been named. Well, I appreciate you coming and sharing, and what a wonderful story. And, you know, it's, uh, it's just been a great journey for us, and I'm grateful my wife is with me, and it's so neat to have Scott in your life and, and uh, being able to share share this journey together. So thanks again, and we'll see you next time here on the Ex-Mormon Files.